All right, good evening, everyone. Um, some of you are used to seeing my face now. I'm Dr. Arnett, and I will be coming to you again with another episode of uh, COVIDCon for, uh, for Sisterhood Incorporated, located in Burlington City, New Jersey. And so I am here tonight with a couple uh, guests. And we are going to just have a candid discussion tonight. Again, as I assure everyone, this is not a political gotcha. We are never here to uh, get political uh, leaders and trying to expose or try to discredit or try to do any of those embarrassing things. It's simply about sharing facts and sharing information um, with our community and with your community and making sure everyone is well informed and everyone is well prepared for what's going on in the pandemic. So let me introduce my guest tonight. Tonight, I am honored to have with me um, some very important and very influential people. I'm just an educator, but I'm glad to have tonight um, Mayor Lauren DeFlippo um, from Edgewater Park, New Jersey, and also Assemblyman Dr. Herb Conaway of New Jersey 7th Legislative District. And he's also the director of the Burlington County Health Department. And so I really feel honored to have them sharing with us tonight. And so tonight we are just going to have some good conversation and um, like I said, address issues facing the community with regards to the COVID-19 pandemic. All right. So good evening to my guests. Good evening, Mayor DeFilippo and Assemblyman Dr. Conaway. If you would just, could you guys just introduce yourselves um, and a little bit of what you do? Uh, we'll, we'll do ladies first tonight. There you go. <laughs> okay. Well, um, um, Lauren DeFilippo, um, Mayor of Edgewater Park. I've been on committee for six years, and this is my second year as mayor not consecutive but my second year um i'm involved in township also with my kids pto and the schools and um you know it's it's kind of a dynamic um way around town We're working with kids and parents and then on the other side the residents of the town so it's it's really nice it's um it's something i enjoy doing the volunteering i started with pto when my daughter was in pre-k and Township committee just sort of was like a progression in the um, in the uh, working with the public kind of way, and I enjoy it. It's it's very nice. I enjoy um, helping people the most. My career is in uh, state government, so I you know it's that whole people person kind of helping, and <laughs> it's fulfilling, and I really enjoy it. Awesome. Well, we thank you definitely for your service. I'm sure the people of Edgewater Park. Definitely appreciate you for the work that you are doing. Um, Dr. Conaway. Well, hi. Uh, hi. Good evening, everyone. I'm a, a lifelong uh, Burlington County resident. Grew up in Bordentown, went to the public schools there and on to, to Princeton and Medical School and um, um, now a practicing physician for a number of years uh, out of St. Francis. I have was elected to uh, the General Assembly in the election in 1997 and took up service in uh, January of 1998 and been in the assembly since that time. I've been chairing the health um, uh, committee principally um, for, I guess, well, for much of the much of my time in the assembly now, <laughs> finishing up 24 years this year, uh, running for re-election again, although it's, I know this is not a political program, but I can't help but throw that in there. I also spent uh, some time in the Air Force right here in Burlington County, and um, I went to law school down in uh, uh, Rutgers um, Law Camden. And, um, and and lastly, among my jobs, I am the director of the Burlington County Health Department. I've been in uh, in the COVID fight here for along with a whole bunch of other people in the the, the entire community um, for um, you know for over a year now. So uh, glad to be with you. Well, listen, I definitely appreciate you, and I can connect with you on a couple of different things. Mm -hmm. One, I'm a native of Pemberton Township, and so I'm very familiar with McGuire Air Force Base. I did some worked there, sang there, and I served in the Air Force as well. And I'm also a graduate of Rutgers University, Camden. Wonderful. <laughs> yes. nice there, so. Definitely a scarlet night as well. So glad to have both of you with us tonight. I was, <laughs> I was, 
<laughs> you across the street. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you for, you guys definitely for your service. And again, tonight, we just want to have some candid conversation about um, the pandemic and uh, some of the things that we're dealing with, specifically what you're dealing with in Burlington County. Um, and so my first question is going to be for Dr. Conaway. Um, uh, we know you as an assemblyman, but also as the director of Burlington County Health Department. Can you give us a, like a, a general overview of the state of Burlington County? with regards to the pandemic, what does this pandemic look like in Burlington County? Well, Burlington County has generally tracked along with much of the, what we're seeing statewide. Uh, we got a little ahead of, of um, uh, I got, did a, for a while they were doing better than the rest of the state because our, our uh, transmission rates were coming down. Uh, we were doing very well there in the early part of the year, but unfortunately we reverted to uh, a, a larger, uh, more, difficult statewide trend of, of high COVID activity, um, uh, along with the rest of the state. I think the, uh, with, with the exception of two or three counties now, um, uh, we have high COVID uh, activity um, present now. Uh, we are, um, you know, like everybody else, struggling to try to figure out how to get vaccine into the, um, to the arms of our residents uh, so we can get uh, the chief community protection. We're working on that every day, We're just on the call with a with our testing vendor, we're going to decentralize our testing program across uh, the county so, so people can have more access to that service. And um, and hopefully next week we'll start some um, countywide meetings to introduce uh, rapid um, uh, testing into the youth sports programs across the county. When, you know, when we have, um, as we follow this uh, and track this disease, uh, we can see that a lot of the, the infections we see in school actually originated on the sports field or on the court. Yeah. And our hope is that if we can um, set up a, a regular testing program in the youth sports area, we can, uh, it'll go a long way to keeping our schools open full time and, and, and paving the way for kids to not only get into school safely, but to remain in school safely. So um, those are just uh, some of the highlights, but we're, we are, um, we're hopeful. I know things are going to get better. Um, uh, the uh, vaccine, the committee reviewing the Johnson Johnson vaccine will meet on Friday. We hope that uh, they uh, they'll give us a positive decision about how we should proceed with the use of that vaccine and uh, that extra uh, tool and the toolkit that will help get people vaccinated will be returning to some segment of our population at the very least. Uh, and that will allow us to and again, ramp up the program as uh, more people are now eligible to be vaccinated. Awesome. So, are you, are, 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 from what you're saying, are you saying there's been a rise in infection rates in Burlington County? Yes, yeah, so we, we've seen that now for the last month or so. We, uh, in mid February uh, through March, we were actually at a moderate rate of activity, but here through the end of March and, and over this uh, this last month, we are now in the high, uh, unfortunately, category. Our positivity rate is running about uh, 10 to 11 percent, and the tests that we conduct. Um, and uh, but overall, the transmission rate has come down a little bit, uh, which is a good news. Uh, at least statewide, it has, and I think also in our county as well. And so we're getting there. It's just you get a little concerned uh, with the spring travel season, which. Unfortunately, a lot of people went away and went to areas of the country yes. where they're, uh, let's just say, a little bit more lax about, you know, you know, enforcing mask mandates and the like. And that means that more people are coming home with an infection and, and mm. they're contributing, unfortunately, to uh, our unfortunate statistics here. But again, we're not seeing anything like we saw before. It's a bump. Uh, and it's probably already going to, uh, it looks like it's already sort of making its way down. We expected it. Um, and uh, we just have to keep uh, vaccinating and reminding people that uh, they need, first of all, need to get vaccinated. It's safe to get vaccinated. The vaccines are highly effective. And even if you're vaccinated, you still have to take precautions because you can still right. catch the disease. Um, you just are very unlikely to die from the disease, but you can still catch, which means you can still transmit and you can transmit to someone who is very frail or elderly mm. and unvaccinated or can't be vaccinated for whatever reason, you can still spread that infection to somebody else. So even the vaccinated persons need to take reasonable precautions when they're around people who, um, who are not their family member. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. I think that's something that some of us have missed that we do still need to protect ourselves even though we've been vaccinated. That's right. Um, 
Now, has there been a, I, I was listening to the news just recently. I, have, has anyone else heard about rise in numbers in, in, in teenagers and in young people? The trend has been lately um, uh, that uh, the average age of the infected persons are is coming down. And I think it's, you know, probably related to um, spring break and, and, and mm. travel. I'm, I'm guessing that the, um, uh, to the extent that, that uh, certainly that generation is as anxious, probably more anxious than others to sort of get out there and try to get back to normal and that uh, the peak <clears throat> factor might be greater in that younger cohort. Uh, and also we're seeing quite frankly, um, uh, variants uh, in the state and active in the state and that might have something to do. There might be a little bit more of a, an affinity of some of these variants. We're seeing UK variant, which is the predominant variant here in our state. Um, we know that's more um, that's more easily spread among persons, and probably a little bit more virulent, uh, and may have. Uh, we'll find with epidemiology studies may um, uh, be uh, more easily spread among young people. We know that these mm -hmm. viruses uh, can uh, um, the various pandemics, viruses we faced over over uh, you know centuries even will have um, affinities for certain age groups, and it may be that these variants are more problematic for younger people than the, than the first uh, wave or the first variant, if you will, the first iterate, uh, iteration of the virus that hit us uh, starting last year. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. Uh, we have also who joined in with us, uh, Ms. Kyra Woodard. She is with Sisterhood Incorporated. And so she is gonna be sharing with us tonight as well. Hey Kyra, it's good to see you. Um, <laughs> Um, and so, but I'm going to go back to mayor, uh, to our mayor tonight and ask, you know, how, what has been the immediate impact upon in Edgewater Park? Um, have you noticed what has been the immediate impact in Edgewater? Last week, we talked to the mayor of Burlington City. Um, and so with Edgewater Park being the nearby neighbor, you know, what has been the immediate impact in Edgewater Park, you know, in economy, employment, education, we're a small town in Burlington City. We have about 9,000 residents. So we're, we're on a much smaller scale. Um, we're more of a town of housing and less of, um, there's less restaurants and less stores. It's not as um, built up that way as Burlington City. So um, our impact on local restaurants and stores was, was minimal because they were still able to stay open through, okay. um, they were able to stay open, but with modifications, of course, and they were able to do that. They had the space to create the outside dining and okay. stores, um, stores were able to do the mask mandate and enforce it and still have their customers come in. Um, they were able to be open. Um, no local eateries or anything had to shut down. Right. Um, they just had to modify, which was, great um our township offices converted over to the um the hybrid virtual system we had no stoppage in service we didn't have to lay anyone off everyone gainfully employed full-time um, there was a disruption on the resident side not being able to come to the building and get services because when a resident wants something done it's then right. And that was a problem, but everything was taken care of within a matter of an extra day or so. Okay. So it's amazing how, as we were saying earlier, how we were able to acclimate to a new, a new way and everyone got their laptop and everyone was after the glitch of, I can't log on. And <laughs> that was taken care of there. We were able to run the town effectively. Uh, whether our staff was home in the office, both back and forth. Um, our schools were also able to convert over to, to fully virtual. All the students were given Chromebooks. So there was no problem with a shortage of computers for the students. And that helped a lot. Um, Are they still virtual? Well, yes, they have the choice. Oh, okay. You can be... 100% virtual, or you could go into the school uh, four okay. days a week, half days. Okay. That's recent. That's their uh, baby steps up to building up to hopefully come September when 
as the governor states, will be full time all day. But um, it's an option if you want to be home or in school. And that's that's okay. That's going all right. They have low numbers, but they're okay with that of in school mm -hmm. students. But it works for them. It's the kids that really needed the most intervention were brought back. Um, parents who opted to have their kids in school came back, and there was enough room for the, everyone that wanted to be there. So we're good with the school. No one had to be turned away that wanted to go. And the rest of the children are home virtual, um, right. and that worked. And this year has just sort of been, um, a, just, I don't want to say a wash because it's very important <laughs> and they're learning something, but you know, it's, I, you don't know what's right or wrong. You just want to get through the school year and it's, right. it's almost over and summer will come and we can kind of recharge and refocus. And like I said, hopefully come September, they will be back in school because, um, it's, very important that they are mentally, emotionally, and educationally. Awesome, yeah. Because this hybrid learning is 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 a lot. <laughs> it, it it is a lot on on parents, students, teachers, everyone. Um, it, it, it's it's just a lot. Uh, I think that's across the board in every school district. It, let me ask this little quick little poll. Anybody else like me? Uh, virtually stressed out, <laughs> finding yourself virtually stressed out because we're doing so much more online. Um, even my LASIK surgery is no longer any good uh, because it has reverted. It, it really has, it has stressed, strained my eyes and now it has reverted my LASIK surgery. So I have to wear glasses now. Um, uh, <laughs> you might have to get used to that anyway. So I, try. <laughs> <laughs> I never go anywhere without a set in my pocket. <laughs> Well, I haven't had to wear glasses since 2006. And so now it's an adjustment for me to go back to wearing glasses. In fact, I don't even know where they are right now, but they're in the house somewhere. But I have to wear glasses now as a result of uh, the continuous work online. Um, and we have so many impacts from, from this pandemic. I want to ask a question about um, with regards to the vaccine, um, because there's a lot of talk. We know there's a lot of reservation among people to get vaccinated. Um, but we, we, I've heard some candid discussion about the impact of the vaccine on pregnant women um, in, in, that, in that area. Can, can anyone share anything more about that in that area with, with maternity, how this impacts uh, pregnant women? Should they get it? Should they not? You know, what should they be concerned with? Well, uh, I guess I'll, I'll take that to the... Um you know, pregnancy is a is a, a high risk state for women, or a higher risk state for women than the non pregnancy state, and so um, and we have uh, epidemiology has shown us uh, that uh, that the disease um, is uh, more difficult to manage in someone who is pregnant because it is a sort of an autoimmune state for women. It is a a, a high risk state than the non pregnancy state, and so the recommendation is, and you should always talk with your OBGYN, your your primary care physician on this uh, is that um, pregnant uh, women should be vaccinated. Uh, if you're contemplating pregnancy, you should be vaccinated uh, because it will um, uh, uh, be an important step to preventing complications in pregnancy. So there's no harm to the to the fetus. There's I have to say there are you know they talk about some of the myths out there. There are people <laughs> are thinking that this virus or this I shouldn't say the the well, neither neither the virus, but certainly not the vaccine, does not have anything to do with changing your your DNA. It doesn't get into the nucleus of a cell. It doesn't get into the nucleus of a of a of an egg cell or a sperm cell to cause any change in in the human being or any future human being. Um, uh, that's uh, that's, a, that's a result of conception. So you, you don't have uh, those kinds of effects. Uh, there's no sterility effect for that same reason that that's floating around out there among the um, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't even know how to describe it. It's sort of called the social <laughs> class um, uh, who is making their way uh, across the uh, the internet landscape. Um, but for pregnant women, the advice is um, uh, get vaccinated. If you're contemplating pregnancy, get vaccinated. It, the, the vaccine does not cause 
COVID. Um, you don't get a live vaccine in a COVID vaccine in your body. You get a piece of the viral protein against which a an immunity is established to protect you from a wild uh, COVID or uh, 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 infecting you and causing a serious illness. So um, it's safe. It's effective, safe for pregnant women, safe for women contemplating pregnancy. Uh, and, uh, you know, we need as many people as we can to get the vaccine so we can get back to normal um, uh, so we can achieve community of protection, Dr. otherwise known as herd immunity. But community protection is a lot word today. Uh, Dr. Conaway, would this vaccine help the fetus uh, with protection? Or well, it's unclear now whether or not just as, you know, we, we ask... You know, this passive immunity, particularly for nursing mothers, you pass antibodies on to that nursing child. Uh, it's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why you want to have uh, women vaccinated. And, and so um, the studies are not clear yet whether or not the same passive immunity passes from mother to child. Uh, but we'll, you know, we're certainly going to find that out uh, as the studies are, are performed on um, the epidemiology work is done. Epidemiologic work, I should say, is done. And so um, we'll find out if if this immunity works like a lot of other immunity that occurs with vaccination, then we'll, then we should see some benefit to the fetus as well. But uh, I can't say that because it hasn't been established. Mm -hmm. Kyra, you want to add something? Hi, I'm Kyra Woodard. I'm the supervisor working with Sisterhood Incorporated. I really was just going to touch on Black maternal health and say basically the just echo what Dr. Conaway had said that you should talk to your healthcare provider. He seems to be an expert in the matter <laughs> though. So he really mm -hmm. took it away. Mm -hmm. And definitely, ladies, if you are pregnant, please get vaccinated. Try to get yourself protected. But he he did a great job. And just also echoing that we are having a trunk or treat on Saturday from oh. 10 to one at Burlington City High School and Chick-fil-A sandwiches will be there. <laughs> so first 50 people come get a sandwich. Can you tell us what is, what's gonna be, it, what, is, what is the trunk or treat? What is, what's gonna be taking place? They're going to be doing testing and it will not be a nose swab. It will be a saliva, it will be saliva. So younger children can come because like someone had said earlier, they are seeing higher numbers in younger people. I know they're also thinking about coming out with a vaccine for younger people. So I guess we'll see how it goes, but they're gonna be doing testing. There's also gonna be registration to get vaccinated. We're gonna show you guys how to register to become vaccinated. The process is not long. Honestly, if you're computer savvy, it takes five minutes. If you're not computer savvy, 15 minutes. <laughs> so. Um, and other than that, there will be other organizations there like BCAP who will be spreading information to mothers and children about services that are provided in the community of Burlington, early childhood education and things like that. Um, Head Start program will be there. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a great time. Lots of information for people, for services in the community. Definitely come on down. We what time? For everyone. When will? 10 to 1 at Saturday. Burlington Burlington City High School. Yes. Okay. You know, I always have to get, get confused. Burlington City, Burlington Township. I don't know one from the other. Um, oh, but it's at Burlington. <laughs> you're not in those towns. You better get it right. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> it's on the scroll at the bottom of the screen if you don't see it there. But it's at Burlington City High School. All right. From 10 to 1. Um, this coming Saturday. So we do encourage people to go out and support Sisterhood. Um, and I, if I'm not mistaken, they'll be giving out PPE um, as well, masks, um, sanitizers, and all the other stuff. So if you need some extra stuff to put in your car, to put in your purse, um, you know, go get your little safety kit and to keep with you because you never know when you're going to need a mask. Now you I never have know. my pocket and every jacket and everything. So I walk up <laughs> to the store and I'm like, oh, I forgot my mask. So now I have one in every jacket. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've gotten out of the car, got to the door of the grocery store, and then had to run back to the car because I left the mask in the car. Yes. So we Every definitely time. want to be supportive of Sisterhood Guilty. on this coming Saturday. Guilty of same. <laughs> 
Um, let me um, let me ask another question, and I'm sure um, Dr. Conway is going to uh, probably lead us on this as well. Um, well, that's what, that's the danger of putting me on this kind of program. Yeah. I know, because uh, because everybody's like, you got an expert on that. Ain't no point me giving my opinion, and he knows the facts. Uh, but we appreciate it. Um, uh, you know, we definitely appreciate it because we see it from so many different perspectives, especially when we were talking about maternal health. And um, I was thinking about some of my teacher coworkers. Um, and as an educator, we always have pregnant teachers in our buildings. Um, and and that I know that has been a stress or major concern for some of them. Should we come back in the building? I know some have applied for medical waivers so they don't have to be back in the building. You know, so it's like, do you come back in the building? Do you stay home? Because they're concerned about um, exposure, um, exposure to 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 the to the pandemic, to this virus, um, because it is spreading in my school alone. After coming that Monday, we came back from spring break, Dr. Conway. Uh, we had about five teachers <clears throat> who had um, reported exposure and had to be removed from the building that very first day. Here we are week two. We had more teachers this week that had exposure and could not come back. Um, and so that is definitely a concern is um, how the numbers, the infection rates are looking among young people um, be because Teachers are exposed every day. You know, if you're in public service, people at Sisterhood, because you guys work directly with children, um, you guys have a, a you, I know in the summer you guys do a, a, a daycare, the, the, the summer camp, and you do a couple other things with children. And so that is something we have to definitely be concerned about. Um, what challenges do you see uh, or do you foresee with regards to the pandemic? You know, any concerns or challenges as we're going forward? Well, you mentioned the concern that, that adults have, uh, and certainly teachers as the principal adult in school uh, have with respect to their uh, to the work. Um, I will tell you that the studies have generally shown that it is the adults who are bringing the, the infection into the school more than the other way around. So it's, it's the adults that are affecting the kids uh, and its activity outside of the school. Uh, that are the principal drivers, and I suspect in the in the post holiday season, a lot of people traveled or had people travel either traveled to them or they traveled and then got exposed and then um, uh, brought that into the school. Uh, and certainly, the pregnancy state is a is a is a state that will understandably raise a lot of concern and anxiety among people. Under the current CDC guidelines, uh, teachers in the classroom, um, even though under the guidelines, kids. Uh, more children can safely be brought to the classroom because we actually see, you know, relatively little transmission in the school among the students in the classroom, particularly in the lower grades who tend to stay in one room. High school kids, different story. Um, they move around. They move around the school. They are they are exposing themselves to other cohorts within the school. Uh, and while um, they can be brought back, um, you know, the rules are a little bit different. Uh, when you get into those uh, middle school and, and high school grades. Teachers in any setting, whether you're teaching in the grade school, elementary school, or high school, you, um, under the guidelines, you should be behind a barrier. You should be up in the front of the classroom, the side of however you arrange your classroom, but you should be, you know, out of the way, certainly well out of uh, the six foot range of students. Uh, and um, if you want, you need you can put a barrier there. If, I, I believe if you're at a six foot range, you really don't need to put a barrier there. But you will have kids who will, you know, you know, how, particularly younger kids. You tell them to do one thing, they'll, they'll have <laughs> it. So having a barrier in place as an extra protection is is not a bad idea. I do think, you know, having barriers around all the desks, you know, that has not been shown to work. And indeed, um, the uh, CDC pulled the the you know, the barriers on desks out of their recommendations because, you know, oh, really? airborne, this is an airborne uh, disease. It travels on droplets, that barrier there, um, you know, where the kid leans back, talks one way or the other, really not going to do a lot to to prevent, you know, spread among uh, among kids. And so, you know, I know schools, uh, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it sort of reminds you of the thing you do just in case. Uh, it's, it's like a Band-Aid you might put on a cut that doesn't need to have a Band-Aid on it or, or um, this, uh, it's more of a psychological protection than an actual protection. And for the cost of these, of uh, these devices, um, and uh, a lot of money coming to schools these days, thanks to the Obama administration, but the cost of these devices um, are, are not, are just that, they're costly. And if they're not right. providing 
that kind of protection that justifies the expense, in my view, uh, school boards would be, um, should think once, twice, and thrice about whether or not to spend money on them. Now, a lot of them have already done that. Uh, but if you haven't done that, I personally, I would not make that recommendation. Indeed, the CDC has removed the, you know, desk-based barriers from their recommendations based on their ineffectiveness. Wow. Uh, that, that's definitely something that, uh, well, we have think because in my school, everybody has a plastic barrier everywhere. Uh, we have plastic barriers everywhere. Um, and now yeah, with the General adding, Assembly, too, and I, I don't think it's a pretty good idea. And I, sold, I told them so, but they put them up anyway. Um, and we're, you know, we're packed in, you know, three feet in those chambers, just like uh, in the Senate, it's even worse, um, uh, like um, the kids in the classroom are. And uh, um, anyway, uh, the point is, this is an airborne uh, droplet borne virus, and uh, those barriers are not providing a whole lot for you. Um, uh, not a, a lot of protection for the cost of installing them. Wow. Can, can you think of it? Uh, this is for mayor, uh, the mayor as well. Can you think of anything that we could have probably done differently in hindsight? You know, they always say hindsight is 2020. Um, <laughs> anything you think we could have done differently, or um, you would have done differently? since we're what, a year plus into this pandemic. Um. I don't know if we could have done anything different in the beginning because nobody knew what to do. We did what we were told to do, mm. but I watched the movie Pandemic at the time that this all started. And I watched this movie and I don't know if you ever saw it, but if I saw it two years ago, I would have shut it off and said, this makes no sense. This could never happen but they shut the schools down and wore the masks and talked about social distancing. Like it was life imitating art. And I was watching in disbelief that something I would have thought would never happen. So unrealistic is happening right now. Exactly. And we had to do these things because it's all we knew to do. And everyone did it. The school shut down, work shut down, life shut down, everything. There was no cars on the road, no traffic, no trains. No trains. And uh, I don't know what we could have done different mm -hmm. than to now. Um, I think we had to stop. I think we had to just stop, figure this out, listen to the professionals, do what they said, because we, ha we had no choice. We couldn't do anything else but do it. Um, I do believe that there was a lot of fear. Um, people have lived with a lot of fear and this goes back to your previous question that I worry um, not just for kids returning to school, but for people returning to society, there's adults mm. who still won't leave their house, who get their deliveries, uh, their groceries delivered to their house. They have mm. a real fear and it's really scary to know that no matter how better things seem that there's a vaccine, it's not changing their perspective and it's still very dangerous out there. And one day the curtain's gonna be pulled back and it's gonna be, no, you have to come back to work or we have to, to be normal again, that they mm -hmm. can't, that they won't, that they don't know how, that they're scared. And the psychological impact on this might be the one thing that yeah. maybe we could have changed, maybe less of the fear that was placed on us because I live it. I, I, you know what? I don't want to turn into anything, but I got the Johnson Johnson vaccine and I'm very fearful. And I was just telling the doctor today, it's like I lived in a year of fear and then I get the mm -hmm. vaccine and I think I didn't want the vaccine, but I got the vaccine and like, I wasn't ready mentally to get it, but my name came up and I got an appointment and I said, oh, I'm just going to get it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go slow, just get the vaccine. And I got it. And if I just went with my gut, I would have been a lot happier because it would have been this week. I would have been eligible for it. Not two weeks ago. And now I'm living in another thing of fear and it's just too much. I thought I was doing the right thing. And I even left the thing two weeks ago with hope. Like I did the right thing. Um, all these variants, like uh, it's one less thing to worry about. And now I'm worried about blood clots. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just a lot on someone. It's a lot how we've had to change everything we've done 
our whole life changed, school changed, work changed, life changed, not seeing friends, not hugging your parents. Yes. And when you were able to, it was, should I, shouldn't I? It's, is this right? Is this wrong? And my kids, when they go hug their grandparent, they were just told not to touch anyone. And now it's, it's fear. Yeah, that, that anxiety issue, and I, I wholeheartedly agree with you that I, I think the psychological impact of, uh, of this pandemic, we're going to be dealing with that um, for years to come um, because there is a lot. Because not only that, we're dealing with the psychological impact of the, the, the pandemic, the isolation, and then when you look at the amount of grief that people have dealt with, and you have been able to funeralize people the way that you are accustomed, you have been able to console each other the way you. So, the, so the psychological impacts are something we are going to definitely um, have to live with. And I thank you for sharing sharing that and being so candid with us, especially as the mayor, being transparent, um, because I think that helps the people in your area to understand. I'm not the only person, even the mayor is nervous. She was has fear. And so thank you for sharing that. Um, welcome, uh, uh, Ms. Green, yeah. who is our, our registered nurse in the house. Thank you so much for joining in with us. And I'm sure you have um, some stories to share about um, this pandemic and what Good you've evening. experienced going through this year. Good evening. Yes, I've just been listening attentively to the uh, webinar and have definitely enjoyed uh, Assemblyman um, Dr. Conway and the, um, the mayor and so candidly as she has spoken and uh, about the grief um, that really impact me as well because we have not taken um, in consideration the issues that have been at hand. And even the former uh, first lady talked about her being depressed and being affected mm. by the pandemic and being the isolation. And we don't talk about the social and psychological issues that come at hand with this pandemic. And it's very much and very real um, that I do see on a daily basis. And we just don't seem to ask people, how are you? Because we just want to throw things at them and say, you're okay and let's make it okay. And it's not okay. And it's mm -hmm. okay to say I'm not okay. Yes. Well, I have to say that, uh, Madam Mayor, that you did the right thing by getting vaccinated. Uh, you, you did do the right thing um, because that vaccine is safe. Now, this concern uh, is um, out of an abundance of caution. Uh, I remind people that we had just six cases among uh, females uh, only uh, between the ages of, of 18 and 48 out of 6.8 to 7 million uh, doses of vaccine given. Uh, and your chances of actually contracting uh, COVID or an even serious disease are higher, many, 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 many times higher uh, than having a side effect from the Johnson & Johnson vaccine itself. And so uh, while you should uh, take uh, um, just notice to, to uh, monitor yourself in the three weeks after your uh, vaccine, uh, to look for any unusual, particularly severe headache, abdominal pain, leg pain, um, uh, that uh, that impact you, uh, but once you get beyond that, uh, you're, you're good to go. And and you should know that as you get beyond that, you're also achieving, uh, you know, um, full effect. After, with Johnson Johnson vaccine, you get uh, quite a lot of impact after two weeks in terms of protection, and then once you hit that one month mark, you hit the full um, protection of the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, I would say, let's hope. Uh, I hope it already does, but let's hope sooner, as soon as possible, you have peace of mind that you that you have a, a that suit of armor uh, that you that around yourself to protect you from this virus and others uh, from this virus because you took the step of getting vaccination. As I'm glad you did. So. Well, I'm two weeks and one day in. So. Right. Yeah, and I, and I hope you become a spokesperson for that because I too would echo. Um, Dr. Conway, because we are waited with bated breath because we have a lot of doses. I am one of the vaccinators as well, um, as well as a nurse who is in the clinic every day, giving out uh, a various uh, of the of the, the um, vaccinations of the either the Pfizer or the Moderna, and we were giving out the Janssen as of last Monday, and we were halted in that. 
So we're looking mm -hmm. very for much forward to, because we have a lot, quite a few doses that are frozen waiting to be given to arms. We've had, we've rolled out this um, vaccine for almost two to three months and have had no problems. And actually this is the one dose that we have actually been very glad to give out because with our homeless population and with a yes. population who um, are, are homebound, we cannot get back to them. So it has been a very effective dose for our elderly. So people who are in their 90s and their 80s has been a very effective treatment against the, um, the SARS COVID virus. And it has been proven, um, some of the research that we have said, and I don't know because I, I don't say what of all the panelists, but they said it has been as effective as most of 77%. Most vaccines or some vaccine is better than none. Once you've gotten your arm and you've gotten vaccine, you've got your armor. So I mostly tell people when they've gotten their card and they've gotten their complete doses, I tell them, hey, you've got your freedom card because basically it gives you the freedom to know that you have gotten some protection from that most COVID doses. And I just wanted to give a segue to what we're going to be talking about next week. And that's the long-term effect of the COVID virus and the long-term effects of people who have actually suffered from COVID. And I have seen far too great of the things yes. of the disease in the African, um, African American community and also the long haulers. It has been a yes. very hard effect on people who have actually had um, the COVID disease. There has not been a, 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 a really total recovery as people have, have been played it out to be. And I'm sure Dr. Conway can probably give you some scenarios as well. And it's just the um, time will not allow me to give you that, but um, you you did do a great thing to to be vaccinated, and we are still pushing the vaccine. So yes. please don't ever hesitate. <clears throat> did you make the right choice? Because six people who didn't even wasn't even in the United States, and they were probably outliers when we talk about who was it that was vaccinated, and they probably had other comorbidities that had nothing to do with this that actually had the, the clots. Um, because those things do happen. Um, right. You know, they'll say, you, you know, somebody who wins the lottery, you got oh, struck by lightning. What are your chances? Those things do happen in life. And we're not talking about lightning, but we're talking about the scenarios of something happening. So um, with that being let me said, ask, okay. let me ask you, did you, you, you said the six women were not in the United States? To my understanding, not. Mm, I'm not sure about that. Uh, so they, I believe they were United States citizens. They were not. This is okay. Okay. Well, and I know I heard on the news this morning that uh, I think in Europe they're, they're they've already gone back and reinstituted using the Johnson and Johnson. They 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 they've stopped their hold their freeze on the Johnson and Johnson uh, vaccine. So I, I I agree with with these two medical professionals. Yeah, I'm a doctor, but I'm not a, a medical doctor, and I like to tell people that I am not the medical doctor. So if you start choking, the only thing I can do is on TV. So you <laughs> <laughs> this is the PhD doctor, not the MD doctor. Yeah. So I can't help you with anything medical, um, but I definitely um, concur with you because, as I said in the previous session, that was a stress of mine is the, the vaccine. As a prior military person, I'm used to getting vaccinated. Um, in the military, we just get vaccinated. We don't even ask questions. You don't get a chance yeah, to ask questions. We just go, <laughs> they jab you and you keep it moving. And they give you two Tylenol at the end of the line and you just keep on going, you know. But because of my mother's, my mother's uh, uh, close to 70. She's getting, you know, so I was concerned about her. I have cousins with other pre-existing conditions with lupus, diabetes, heart disease. So all of these different things were um, of concern to me. So. I was like you, Mayor, I, I was stressing, and then I kind of got nervous. I didn't want to get it, but I did. And then I did get a little peace of mind, of course. And then you hear some of the negative stories, and it kind of makes you feel a little, oh, my God, should I, I should have done that. But I did it, so I, I feel a little bit better now that I did do it. Um, somebody did pose the question, and um, I'm not sure one of these medical professionals may need to answer this. The question is about the uh, effectiveness of air purifiers. You know, um, for example, I was at the doctor's, I was at my dentist's office, um, the, the eye doctor, and she had an uh, air purifier uh, in her office with the ultraviolet light on it. And so how effective are they in terms of prevention and, and, and dealing with this vaccine, the, the, the virus? 
Well, this question has come up with the CDC. I'm trying to uh, ch checked last checked on this. Uh, it's a, a few weeks ago now, and they were looking at this, uh, particularly these um, uh, ultraviolet um, uh, air purifiers, and you know they didn't feel like they had enough evidence to recommend that they should be installed. So I'm not going to say they don't work, um, but I'm uh, but I would just say that the CDC, at least when I checked last checked, and this is going back three, maybe four weeks on this question of whether or not you know, we should purchase them, should we be putting them in, in various spaces uh, that, um, you know, they're not prepared to recommend them at this time. Um, and there are concerns about, uh, you know, the safety of some of these devices. You have to make sure they're shielded and the like, and, uh, et cetera. Um, what is important uh, is to have good ventilation in your space, um, to be able to move air in and out of that building. And so, um, you know, those um, standards of air handling uh, need to be met in the school system in particular. In particular, it, it's one of yeah. the reasons why uh, money is coming in the school force and the physical upgrades that some schools need. Most schools now, of course, there is a standard that they're supposed to meet. Now, somebody's got to go in there and check to make sure they're doing that. Uh, but, um, you know, in terms of air filtration and the like, getting your windows open as much as you can, moving as much air in and out of your out of the building as you can is helpful. Um, and, um, um, it, it is helpful, but it's masking, it's social distance, it's washing your hands, it's the basic stuff that that protects you. Uh, vaccines are great, uh, but a lot of the protection that if you can just get people to comply now, uh, that, that will prevent the spread of the virus has to do with very basic things that are within the reach of, of the average person. It's hand sanitizer with you, wash your hands, keep your hands off your face, or be, you know, be careful if you have to touch a lot of surfaces, wash your hands after that. Keep a distance from people that um, that are not in your in your pod. And um, if you just did that, um, you would go a long way to protect yourself from this virus. But of course, the vaccine again is is critical as a critical step as well. Yeah. Awesome. Um, can you guys, as we're getting to the end of our time together, with just um, if you, Mayor, what resources do the residents of Edgewood Water Park um, have? You know, are there resources that people may need to know about, that, um, numbers they may need to call if they need any specific type of assistance as they're going through this pandemic? Well, at this point, anyone can contact the um, township offices. They can email any of the township committee members. We're, we're here to help. We have, I don't want to say connections, but we have ways <laughs> to get to people that, that need help. Um, I, I'm... I work for the Department of Labor and I had a few uh, and, um, inquiries about needing help that way. And, you know, it's just, just ask. Just them ask. Them. You, uh, with the food benefits that we had, um, people asking about the, um, the food pantry giveaways. And we were able to give that information because we get it all in to disperse out to our residents, but people don't always have media or ways of knowing this. So the best course is to call the township building, email one of us. We will help. We can all help and we will help. That's the best advice I can give. Awesome. Uh, Dr. Conway, for Burlington County, are there numbers, resources that residents of Burlington County can call in general for um, any kind of help, relief, resources? Well, yes, and I'm going to have to sign off in just about a minute to, uh, to get on uh -huh. another call. Uh, but I would say I would ask people to download our Burlington County Health app. Um, you can get that from Google Play or, or the Apple Store. And uh, with the use of that app, we send out updates all the time. If, if an organization sends something to us, we'll put it out on our app and, and we'll, you know, you'll get a little notice. Check out the latest news from the Burlington County uh, Health Department. Of course, we have our Facebook page. We have our Burlington County uh, website where you can get information there as well. And we try to reach people through the press and, and occasionally might hear my voice on, on a robocall uh, if, there's, um, if there's a program or information I think you need to have. We will um, be expanding our, our the reach of our testing by, by moving uh, from um, the college in Mount Laurel to three municipalities. Mount Laurel will be one, but then we're going to uh, talking to the mayor of um, uh, Deputy Mayor Vives from today about putting a, 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 a testing site uh, in, 
and Evesham, and then we've been on with the officials up in Florence as well. We're trying to, you know, cover the you know various regions of the county to make uh, the put testing within reach, and we'll be um, we should expect to receive increasing back, uh, allocations of vaccine, and we're going to try to get those out as uh, quickly as we can into the arms of people who are trained nurses. Uh, to do uh, some of that work for us today. We've uh, brought in a new equipment to help with the, with uh, documenting, recording everything. And so as soon as we get vaccine from the state, we're gonna be rushing to get it uh, into the arms of people. We're already working on the homebound, we're working on the homeless, um, but we're out of vaccine. Uh, so um, I've got to run, I've enjoyed it, um, but uh, we're available as a resource. Check out the health app and, we'll, and we will uh, see you um, uh, ahead, uh, facing and looking forward to better times. So. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Conway, for your time. We'll see you now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, as we're getting ready to come to a close, I'm going to give you an opportunity. Is there anything you want to close out and share, um, any kind of reminder, update you want to give to, um, to the audience as we're getting ready to close? Anyone? If you're just joining us, remember Saturday, 10 to 1, Trunk or Treat, Bronze City High School, 100 Blue Devil Way, Bronze City, New Jersey. And you know that we are doing the COVID testing as well. So please, please, please pre register. And we are doing walkings as well. We're doing the saliva test. We definitely want to see you there. Please beat us there. Don't beat us there. Beat us there. <laughs> um, it's one Blue Devil Way, Burlington City High School. It's right there. You can't meet us, Route 130. Please be there. I mean, free COVID testing. No questions asked. Come and be there. And we also have some prenatal. Um, I think the perinatal of Burlington, uh, the, the county will be there as well. So there's a lot of giveaways coming. Please come. We've got a lot of people that's going to be out there. Some giveaways. Just meet us there. We're going to have a good time. Awesome. Mayor? My reminder is just, you know, be safe, be well, be smart be proactive and um, get tested, get vaccinated. Don't be scared like me, <laughs> but um, just just do it. Just get it done and we'll be good. We will move on and look back on this and it'll be in the history books and we will all have a story to share and we'll do it together. <laughs> Awesome. I, I I don't think there could have been any final closing words to the audience, but definitely do that. Even if you're fearful, conquer your fear by getting vaccinated. I tell everybody, uh, this pandemic has shown us that there's no respect of, of our political affiliation, our race, gender, orientation. None of that even matters. It's a human issue. Um, so let's be protect, protect yourself, protect one another. Um, get vaccinated, do the best that you can. Stay safe, everyone. Wash your hands, wear your mask, uh, and, and do what you can. So thank you guys for sharing your time and your expertise and your wisdom. Thank you so much. Thank and you, I look forward to seeing all of you guys you, real Kara. soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Kyra, for Bye -bye. filling in. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. God bless.